using timecode is the most precise way you can synchronize your fireworks display to a musical soundtrack. So we're going to walk through that process uh, with the PyroDigital field controller. When using timecode with the PyroDigital system, you're going to feed that timecode into one of two ports on the back left side of the controller. The primary one that is typically used when you have an XLR connection is the port labeled line in. The alternative, if you have an RCA type connection, is to use the tape in port. They both provide the same functionality in regards to feeding the controller time code. Please be careful and pay attention when you are connecting your system prior to showtime as the line in for time code has the same XLR type connection as your firing cable connection which is on the right side of the controller. So remember that your firing cable gets connected to the back right of the controller and your time code cable gets connected to the back left of the controller. First thing as always, we're gonna flip the controller on. Once it's gone through its EEPROM check, we're going to then select auto fire in the operating mode section. After you hit the auto fire button, it's going to ask you to verify that your firing sight is clear before turning the arming key. So make sure you do so. Turn the arming key. Now any of these auto fire modes, the field controller will fire the entire show per its pre-programmed script. For choice zero, which is internal, it'll fire your script using its own internal clock. There's actually a whole separate video describing that function and how to synchronize with your audio technician or your DJ when shooting in internal clock mode. But what we're gonna talk about is uh, using a form of time code. And you can see there's four different types of time code that you can pick from and or utilize with the Pyro Digital Field Controller. Those four choices allow you to choose between different types of time code. Um, for example, number two is SMPTE, that's very commonly used in the movie and television industry. Um, the one that we use 99.9% .9 of the time at our displays is choice one, which is PyroDigital FSK. It's a proprietary timecode format for use with the PyroDigital system. So we're gonna concentrate on that one for this demonstration. So we're gonna go ahead and hit choice one, and that selects PyroDigital FSK. Once you do that, it brings you into this screen, which shows you that it is now in fire mode, and it is currently on table number zero. You can select which table you're going to shoot from the table is basically your script, and you can have different scripts within your controller um, for different shows. Let's say you're doing a show on Saturday and then a different show on Sunday. Well, you can actually load both of those shows in different tables. So one of them you're going to select table zero, let's say, for Saturday, and then you would select table one for Sunday's show. And those can be two completely different scripts that you're shooting to. So you always wanna make sure when you're on this screen that you're in the correct table. So now, so the next thing we do is we hit the fire button. The fire button then puts it into what's called wait code mode. What that means is the field controller is now waiting for time code to come through. So at this point in time, the show control is in the hands of your audio technician or your DJ. So at this point in time, you have to maintain your site security. Your firing site must be clear because you're armed. And as soon as the time code starts coming through, when the DJ starts the soundtrack, then uh, the field controller will begin going through the script and fire um, according to that script. When the DJ starts the soundtrack and the time code starts coming through, the first thing you're gonna actually hear is the carrier tone. And then a few seconds later, you'll begin to hear the modulated FSK signal. 
that signal will sound something very much like your old school dial-up modems that everyone had back in the day. Once the time code starts coming through, it'll change from wait code to sync find, which means it's now receiving the code and it's uh, interpreting it, synchronizing the controller to that time code. That typically only takes a few seconds and it will then change from sync find to in sync, which means your field controller is now synchronized to your soundtrack. The time shown at the top of the screen is the time of the next shot. Now we have a whole video on what all of these different metrics on the screen uh, indicate, but that's essentially your event time. So that's the time of the next event. So at one minute on this particular soundtrack, because we typically give ourselves what we call a one minute pre-roll, which gives us a minute during the synchronization period when the DJ starts the CD to synchronize our field controller and work through any potential issues that may arise. So at one minute, with this particular script, the fireworks and the music will actually start. Once your controller has synchronized to the timecode signal, at any point in time during your display, if the timecode signal is lost for whatever reason, the controller will automatically switch over to its internal clock and continue firing the show. That's indicated by it changing from in sync to internal drive. If you begin to receive timecode again during the show after having lost timecode at some point, it will then resync and you will see internal drive, go to sync find and then back in sync. It's not uncommon to see the display flicker back and forth between in sync, internal drive, sync find during the display. If you have a very poor quality time code signal coming through, whether it's because you have a really long XLR run or the DJ doesn't have the gain turned up enough on the audio signal that he's sending you or a poor wireless connection, whatever the case may be, the controller will continue to run regardless of whether it's an in sync or internal drive, continuing to fire your show. As with any of the auto fire modes, you need to make sure you're holding down the hold fire button prior to your first shot being fired. The hold fire light means it's in uh, the dead man switch or the hold fire button is not depressed. If you see that light on, the controller will beep at you when it's in auto fire mode every time it gets to a shot because it's telling you that I'm not shooting those shots because you're not depressing the hold fire button. And anytime the hold fire button is depressed, it will actually shoot that shot and not beep at you. You'll see this red light flicker when the hold fire button is depressed when it is firing a shot. That's your activity light. That's telling you I'm doing something. So that light will flicker or flash every time it sends out a fire command to the field modules. And your hold fire light will be off. You want that hold fire light to be off during the entire show unless there's some sort of an emergency or situation that you want the controller to stop firing immediately and therefore would let go of the hold fire light. You'll notice in the bottom right hand corner of the controller that you have a set of volume knobs the two that are relevant to this conversation are script beep and time code. The script beep will occur any time uh, the controller gets to an event time and the hold fire button is not being depressed. It'll essentially beep at you, letting you know, hey, I'm not firing your show right now. So if you have a backup controller running, um, I always turn that script beep off so that it doesn't confuse me and I know that I'm successfully holding the hold fire button down during the show on the controller that I'm firing with. The time code, when the time code is coming through, you'll hear uh, the noise I described. That can be turned down as well using that volume knob. 